Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Prof. Jack Nell from the Department of Business Management. Prof, welcome. Thank you very much for this invitation. Um, I'm looking forward to the interview and I hope I can give some insights to future researchers. Thank you so much. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Well, um, I think the starting point for everyone is that uh, that they entered the, uh, the academic environment. So I started working at the university way back in uh, on first of first of October 1996, and I worked in a unit called the Unit for Small Business Development. Obviously, we we did small business development entrepreneurship, and um, so research wasn't a very uh, strong focus of my work. Luckily, I um, met a very good supervisor for my master's degree, who's currently um, at Stellenbosch University, and I think he he's really the, the, the start to my whole academic career as a researcher. Um, you know, he, he was able to explain the research to me and encourage it and make it enjoyable. So after that, I was also fortunate to have a very good uh, su uh, supervisor for my PhD, um, Professor Christoph Bosov, um, who is a B3 red rated researcher, and because he also enjoys enjoys um, being part of the academic environment and doing research, you know, he he has the ability to pull someone into becoming a researcher. And I think that is really the two pivotal points in my academic career as a researcher. Thank you so much, Prof. And what are you currently working on? My current research is on omnichannel marketing. Um, I started out with um, a standard digital marketing research, so all my research has been in that. So it, it evolved as the digital marketing environment evolved. So. Uh, a couple of years ago, or my PhD, which I completed in 2013, was on electronic banking, and I studied mobile banking and uh, online banking, how people use it differently, and then it moved on to social media marketing and how the password in my environment is omnichannel marketing. So at the moment, um, we are we we did some or recently we completed research which um, focused on why people would not use the mobile website of a company to purchase. For example, while they are busy using um, uh, the desktop computer to purchase. It's an interesting thing, it, you know, this habit and this status quo bias and people go back. And, and that's a very important area of research. So one of my master students at the moment, he's doing uh, Instagram shopping research. And there's also about the whole omnichannel effect. How do you move from one platform to another and, and what in inhibits people actually to do it as well. So um, my current projects, um, I have a couple of PhD students who are finishing some research in digital marketing. I'm doing um, a very interesting meta-analysis study with uh, Professor De Rat. Um, from a university in the Netherlands and um, and then also I am gearing up for other on, on the channel research which I you know which I will more engage in myself. Thank you so much Prof and then what role or impact can artificial intelligence brought in the field of business management? It's going to have a major impact the question just at the moment is, what is artificial intelligence? You know, and if you look at the service bots that we have, many of them are command driven or menu driven, and that's not really artificial intelligence. So we have to really distinguish between um, between you know software we view as artificial intelligence or we think is artificial intelligence, but it's not. Um, the best example that everyone knows is, of course, ChatGPT. Who doesn't know it? That's artificial intelligence, but it's algorithm-driven. So, 
the, the future is bright for artificial intelligence, um, but there must be a business case for it. If you think about near field communication and simply you can bank, you can pay it at a store, you know, in a store with your mobile phone. The interesting thing is people don't do it. We tap our cards. So in one way, what it says is we don't understand the value of it or what the bank is offering isn't valuable to the customer. So the same is going to be with artificial intelligence. How do we create value? The, you know, the, the buzzwords at the moment is it's going to be personalization, interaction, it's um, a sense and response marketing. Uh, but the question is, will the customer really experience the value? And if they don't, it's not. If I can just give you an example of personalization, you know, when I started with my research in, in the early 2000s, personalization was a buzzword. Everyone said, you, you, your website must do personalization. But how many people create a profile, then provide information about themselves for this personalization of site content to happen? The best personalization, you know, people don't value it, so people don't do it. So, But the best personalization that we see at the moment, of course, is where you browse and you get the recommendations, where it says people who bought this also bought that. That's also personalization. And I hope with AI, I can get a really personalized email from a retailer. Because so far at the moment, the only personalization I get is, dear Jock, look at the following and they sell me products which isn't really relevant to me. And that is the future of AI. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's going to have a big impact. You know, we all say it now because it's the beginning of the hype cycle. But the question is, what what value will it hold for the customer? And then, of course, the privacy paradox. Will people give up their private information? Because you cannot do personalization with, with, without information. Will people be willing to give it up to experience the benefits of AI? Thank you, Prof. And then coming back to digital marketing, looking at Netflix and TikTok, what role will they play in digital marketing? Well, Netflix is in a very competitive space at the moment. You know, there is Disney Plus, which is there. We have our own DSTV channels and so on. Um, they changed everything about viewing uh, a movie. I can't remember when was the last time I went to the movies. Um, the other day I walked past it with my kids and said, you know, this is how a cinema looks. You know, it's almost like a bit of a dinosaur. It changed everything. But the challenge for those companies is there's a lot of competition out there. There's zero switching cost. But it changed the industry. It's like Facebook, and I often use the example in the class. Um, I asked my students, when was the last time you bought someone a birthday card? I remember when I grew up in the 80s, you went to Cardis and you bought birthday cards. You know, and Cardis has disappeared. And the cinemas sit with the same problem. They can also disappear. But the competition is so stiff between those um, digital platforms, digital on-demand video platforms, that even they are facing challenges. I read the other day about Disney Plus, who are now, uh, you know, downsizing certain areas of their content because they are not uh, meeting the expectations. So, and then TikTok influencer marketing, it is incredible. Um, the the meta-analysis I'm doing with Professor De Ratt from, uh, from the University of the Netherlands um, is on influencer marketing. We once upon a time, we had these mega influencers and you had to have 2 million, 3 million followers before you became an influencer. Now we have micro-influencers, people who have 10,000 followers. And they become a very important part in uh, becoming a very important part in marketing the product to, to the end users. So 
um, there are people who make their whole life out of being an influencer, and anyone can be an influencer, that, and anyone can make those videos. So, of my opinion, major platform, a business cannot ignore it. Um, as I said, my, my one student, um, uh, you know, is doing his research on Instagram, but that's more on the advertising side. But uh, influencer marketing is is a major area of research. Every morning I log onto Google Scholar. I just see a number of articles listed, you know, appearing influencer marketing, influencer marketing, various platform strategies, and so on. So, a um, major revolution in digital marketing. Thank you so much, bro. And what message can you share with uh, aspiring researchers? Have fun. That is, that is the most important thing. One cannot do research and not enjoy it. Okay, so you must find in research what an what, uh, 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 internal motivation to do it. Um, so first find a topic you like, you find interesting. Okay, so I started in, in small business management, entrepreneurship, and I, I migrated to digital marketing, which I really enjoy. Um, it's a life, it changes daily, and it's incredibly um, challenging. So find something you like, and do your research, something that you're passionate about. Now remember, you're going to do this for the next 10, 15 years. Um, you cannot start with something, uh, or working on a topic, and expect to really, you know, build up momentum, or they call it traction, like they will always say, in five years. The first five years, you are going to explore the subject field. You're going to learn how it goes, what's the trends, and so on. And then, in the next five years, and the five years after that, you are going to get velocity, and your research career is going to increase. And, uh, so find something that you like. Second thing, second um, message I always have for my postgraduate students, I tell them, you don't have to change the world with, your, with one study. It's not what research is about. Research is about incremental contributions to knowledge. The other day I was at a conference, the EMAC conference, and uh, they have a climber community, so all the so you can go and sit in, but to speak to, to academics, young academics. Okay, I've already passed that, but I find it very interesting in, in, in how they can move their career. And um, Professor Rust, who, who, who did the presentation, said, and he said something which really stood out for me. He said, keep it simple and keep it significant. Okay, so that significant is what the research is about. So, where you must be at the forefront of your of your of, of your field of study, and uh, and you must do and you must stay there. You cannot fall back. The other th advice I can give a young researcher is: do research with like-minded people. You know, someone you can relate to. And I I measured I, I mentioned my two colleagues, Professor Riemann and Professor Bosov. They. Without them, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have evolved quickly and learned it. So find like-minded people, people you can relate to, and who, people, who, and be, uh, very important people who can, who can mentor, really mentor you, and that is going to help. That is that's going to help. And then all, always. The, the university presents so many opportunities for researchers. Make use of them all. You know, you can apply for funds to do research, you can travel. You, there's so much things that the university do. You cannot just sit in your office. Tap into that and make it work for you to advance your career. Um, so that's my most I think that's the advice I would like to give every young uh, researcher. Thank you so much, bro. And then, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? There are many. There are way too many. Um, the most exciting one at the moment is AI, of course. Um, 
uh, we have seen with IO the initial papers which came out were very conceptual. But now with big data, we companies are collecting data on a continuous basis. That is that is a lot of information that, that will bring research for us. The other one which I'm quite excited about is um, virtual reality. I think it's becoming more it's filtering into our everyday lives and um, if you look at the possibilities for people to engage in virtual reality and use it to offer service and so on I think that's that is a very important development in the future and then of course um, you know, the, the other one which will always continue to grow is of course the, the whole uh, mark, the whole marketing around mobile devices. We carry it with it every day, we have it with us every moment and I truly believe that that area of research is still going to continue. There's always going to be new apps and new services coming to our mobile devices and the question is not why people want to use it and, and we call it the, the pro-innovation bias. The question is why don't people want to use it? And because, as I've given an example, I've talked to people, how many of them tap their mobile phone or use their mobile phone in the store to pay? It's there, but they tap the card. And that is really the angle to look at. Um, you know, switch angles. Don't only say people want to use it, but also ask the question, why don't people want to use it? And that is that is a major untapped area in business management marketing research. Oh, thank you. And then, Prof, apart from research, what are your other interests? Uh, you will not believe it, but I'm a keen photographer. Um, but, but these days, my hobbies are my kids. They are two busy boys, and uh, so my photography moved to the back. And um, I do sport with them, you know, so my, my children are into cricket and tennis and every afternoon we kick a ball somewhere on the lawn. So that, that has become my hobbies, my, my real hobbies. So, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, so the photography is a bit of uh, something, you know, I think is it, I passed it, maybe one day when I retire and my kids, you know, finish school and completed their degrees, I can go back to, to photography, <laughs> but not at the moment. Oh, and then my other hobby, of course, is homework. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I sit and do a lot of homework with my boys, which is, which is interesting. Okay, thank you so much, bro. And then, Prof, lastly, something that we really neglect is the mental health. What message can you share with us about how to look after our mental health? That is an incredibly important issue. Um, if you look at the, if you think about COVID, you know, I think a lot of people experienced burnout. Um, within the academics, you know, students and, and academics, you know, burnout is is, I think it, it's really there between, really there, uh, uh, you know, in those two communities. The most important thing is to, to seek help when you think you are at burnout. You know, one must look for the common um, symptoms like being tired, not being positive, not having energy. Um, so one needs need to seek help because you experience burnout because of habits sometimes and you need to get professional help on it and that's the first thing that you have to do. The second thing I always tell my students before they write a test, you know, have a good breakfast, you know, don't drink too much of this uh, carbonated caffeine drinks, so you have to look at what you what you eat and and you know what you put into your body and you have to manage that because otherwise you cannot be mentally strong enough and then the other thing which is really important is you know 
take a break from your work, from your studies. A real break, not a 10 minute break. Do something else. If you take a break on a Saturday afternoon, you know, go and, and chat with friends or go for a walk on a Sunday. Do something which is really relaxing for you. Because if you never relax and you get into that rhythm and you just work, 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 you're going to end up with burnout. And, um, and you have to take control of the situation. That would be my advice to them. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Prof. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for inviting me and, and the talk, and I wish all the young researchers out there all the best. Thank you, Prof. Thank you.